beautiful family, blessed family, with a flair bougie. I'd rather be in no place, no other place, than in the house of the Lord with our beautiful, beautiful family of faith. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we honor your goodness. We honor your strength. We honor your love and we honor your care. Yahweh, the God that is always there. You are the Father that is always there. May we never fail to recognize that you are here right now, but that we also respond to it. Father, be glorified in every single life in here tonight. Do what only you can do. For the kingdom is yours. The power is yours. And the glory is all yours. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So be it. Woo, you may be seated. Tonight is New Year's Eve, the year before the new year, the day before a new day. Today's message is titled, The Night Before You're New. The Night Before You're New, Eve. Eve means a period preceding or leading up to any event. Eve also means evening, like the evening before the darkness and the darkness before the sunrise. The durations, the seasons, the length, the stretch, the time period before the change. New Year's Eve, the night before the new, before the improved, before the transformation, the remodeled, the adjusted, before the more, before the different, the additional, before the increase, your nights before. This past year and the years before all had nights. We've all had our nights, good ones, bad ones, great ones, and painful ones. Someone once called them the dark nights of the soul. Yet not one of them were without God's care. Not one of those nights that you cried was God not wiping your tears. Not one of those nights that you laughed was God not tickled. Not one of those nights that you felt alone was God not by your side. Not one of those nights that you were overwhelmed was God not over you. Not one of those nights that you were blessed was God not touching you. Not one of those nights that broke you was God not strengthening you. In other words, that night, that night that you had that setback, your God was orchestrating a setup for your comeback. New Year's Eve, the night before the new. I remember when I was a young girl, New Year's Eve was time to party, to go out with my girlfriends and celebrate, you know, the superficial kind of celebrate, not to contemplate, but to celebrate, not to reflect, but rather to deflect the painful nights before that night, 
There's nothing wrong with celebrating, but if it does not have any contemplation, it's empty. And sure, you would have some people that would pretend to evaluate and come up with some New Year's resolution that wouldn't make it past the first new week. Regardless, when you would hear the resolutions, you could hear the superficiality of it, the lack of reflection and the intentional deflection. I'm going to the gym this year. I'm not going to be on social media for more than an hour. I'm not going to let him or her get under my skin this year. I'm not going to watch Netflix for more than two hours. You know, any good change I ever made in my life, Anything I resolved to do differently never happened on the way to a party. Uh-uh. They never happened while trying to deflect some evenings in my life. They never happened by trying to push away the nights that I didn't want to count. You know, the nights that are too sore to touch. A lot of times we see actions that reflect the words I'm about to say. We see them in a lot of different forms, not just verbally, but uh, uh, in actions. I don't want to count all 365 days of that year because there is no way that God can do anything with those nights now. It seems like God was too busy that night. He couldn't have been there. He forgot about me, so I've got to forget about those nights. If it seems he didn't help me with that night then, then how can he help me with that night now? That right there. That right there. Family, if you can solidify the answer to that question, that is the question that will bring your new every day in any night. That is the question that will be your change. Not, it won't be some New Year's resolution. It'll be your New Year's revolution. King David. King David had a lot of insight and perspective. And he shares it with us in Psalm 16, verses 6 through 8. The lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a good inheritance. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. The words of King David. Insight and perspective into the life of a man that had many, many nights, all kinds of nights, tragic ones, triumphant ones, nights of grief and nights of joy, nights of loss and nights of overwhelming victory. You know, when we think of the king before his name, we think of the jewels, not the weight of his crown. We don't think of the battle helmets he wore, we think of the crown. Metaphorically speaking, under every crown is a battle helmet. And family, God has made you royalty. And with that crown comes a battle helmet. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. A lot of times, battles are not physical. In fact, most of the time, battles are not physical. They are our minds our attitudes, our perspectives, 
how we fight to understand. How do you fight to understand? How we fight to see. Do you fight to see or do you fight to stay blind? How we fight to right our wrong, how we fight to right our words. I'd like us to look at five potent attributes, five very powerful attributes of King David in this verse. Number one, gratefulness. Number two, praise. Three, obedience. Four, preference. And five, confidence. Five. Five attributes. The number of grace. The grace that carried King David. You see me. You hear me say it all the time. Oh, but let's break them down. Verse six. The lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Yes. I have a good inheritance. That is a thank you. Gratefulness. That is another way of saying I'm grateful for what I had and I'm so grateful for what I have. And when King David says lines, he means portion. My portion. You see, portions were measured in lines. My portions have fallen to me. Fallen means flow. They have flowed to me like milk and honey in pleasant places. In other words, thank you, Lord, for my portions that flowed like milk and honey in my personal promised land. Family, before we begin anything in our life, anything, it's important to say thank you, Lord, for everything. <laughs> Notice before David talks about the night seasons, he first gives God thanks for the good seasons, for the good portions. It makes it very difficult to navigate the night seasons in our life when we fail to give thanks for the good seasons. The first thing we ought to do before we enter the new year is say, thank you, Lord, for this past year. Thank you for all 365 days. I'm not going to exclude not one. Yes, some days were hard. Some days were difficult. But thank you, Lord, that your plans are too difficult for the devil to beat. The portion you gave me sustained me. Thank you for my portion. Thank you for the portion of strength you gave me to get back up. Thank you for the portion of blessing that put food on the table, that paid off that debt. Thank you for the portion that removed toxic people. Thank you for the portion that opened that door. Thank you for the portion that healed my family member. Thank you for the portion that made a way when there was no way. Thank you for my portion. You see, some people want more. Oh, we are the the people of more, 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 more. <laughs> Some people want more, but they don't even know how to continue to give thanks for the more of before, the more of before. Thank you is not a one-time thing. I'm still giving thanks to God for the portions he gave me that got me out and through being a teenage homeless girl. I'm still giving thanks to the Lord for the portion he gave me as a teenage single parent. Oh, I thank him for the portions, every single one of them, for the ones that are still here and for the ones that are not. Family, we cannot forget. We must not forget. But unfortunately, in our humanness, people forget. And when you forget your previous portions, you may forego getting more. See, King David didn't forget. In fact, he was the one who wrote, forget not all his benefits. 
all his benefits, yet this is the man that had a lot of night seasons. But he says, the lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a good inheritance. Not I had a good inheritance. I have a good inheritance. Inheritance. Family, that means that something is already designated for you. Something of great value that has been given to you belongs to you. Oh, follow me. This is deep. In other words, whosoever, yes, I said whosoever, even the whosoever's that you're not crazy about, the whosoever's that get under your skin, the whosoever's that are crazy, whosoever has made God his or hers has made themselves his. And there is no snatching you out of his hands. Jesus said, no one can snatch them out of my hand. And if Jesus says no one, that means no one, no thing, no crazy. Therefore, if you have made yourself his, you have an inheritance, family, of great value. You have an inheritance that cannot be thwarted, that does not fade away. You have an inheritance that cannot be overwhelmed, an inheritance that cannot be circumvented, an inheritance that cannot be subjugated. You have an inheritance that cannot be overpowered because he who is our inheritance also guards our inheritance. It is the blessed assurance that Jesus is mine. David is saying, I gave myself to the Lord. So I have him in my heart now. Therefore, God has me in his hand now and forever. In the now and in the after. What David is saying is death cannot touch a thing like that. Death can no more affect a man's relation to God, a woman's bond to God, whom he or she has learned to love and trust any more than you can cut through a thought or cut through a feeling with a knife. Mm -mm. The two belong in two different regions. As much as you would like to, you cannot touch someone's thoughts. You cannot touch someone's feelings. So death itself cannot touch the heritage of the man or woman whose heritage is the Lord. Oh, I need to say that again. No thing can touch the heritage of the man or woman whose heritage is the Lord. In Psalm 16, 5, it says, The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my life. David understands. He understands the power and security of his inheritance. He understands the power of his inheritance in the joys and in the sadness, in the trials and in the triumphs, in the times past and in the now. And family, I'm here to encourage you to understand yours. In Romans chapter 8, verses 37 through 39, it says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is Christ Jesus our Lord. When we root ourselves in God, making him our truest treasure, nothing can rob us of our wealth, family. Especially when you understand what your wealth is. Know your inheritance and own what is yours. David goes on to say in verse 7, I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. 
My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. That is number two and three. Praise and obedience. One of the ways to bless the Lord is to praise him. To bless is translated to speak well of. It is to acknowledge his power by bringing knowledge to those around you of his power. It is to acknowledge his sovereignty through song, through words, but most importantly, through actions. David goes on to say, my heart, my heart also instructs me in the night seasons. You know, the evenings that went into darkness. The ones we don't want to talk about. The ones we shy away from. Right? The ones that we dress to the nines. I'm all right. I'm all right. You know, I was, I was reading the book Beloved by Toni Morrison. And there was a line there that was, whew. She asked the, the, a, a gentleman, how you doing? He said, uh, she said, but you look good. He said, the devil's all right if you look good as long as you don't feel good. Obedience is actually happening in two forms here, through counsel and through instruction. But first notice, King David says, my heart instructs me in the night seasons. Jesus said in Mark chapter 12, verses 29 through 30, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. He also said in John 15, 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Family, it's about who dwells in your heart. Who has a hold of your heart? You see, then your inward thoughts and affections being inspired and moved by the Holy Spirit instruct and direct you how to please God and how to put your whole trust in him. Right in the midst of it. A lot of times we look at counsel and instruction as the same thing, but they're not. Counsel. Counsel is showing you how to see things. It tries to help you see things from a different perspective. Primarily, counsel brings revelation to you. And it brings revelation to you so that you know how to handle instruction so that you can go in the right direction. You can never follow instruction if you don't know how to receive counsel. You see, some people can be given revelation, but you never see a transformation. And God sends people into your life for counsel. Even if you're going to seek, which is probably the wisest thing. Sometimes God tries to show someone something, but they refuse to see it. To accept it. In other words, they refuse his counsel. Right? It's something that they're not comfortable with. God's given them a revelation through counsel. Um, this, is, this is what I'm observing here. And so because they refuse the revelation, they can't get to the revolution. There will never be a revolution without revelation. The prerequisite is always revelation. In other words, to accept God's counsel. And to accept God's counsel is to accept when he is telling you, that's not right. This is. Instruction. Instruction is different. It's different because this is where God is telling you what to do. Not what it is, but what to do with it. How to fix it. How to get through it. What King David is specifically saying is the Lord instructed me what to do in the night seasons. Oh, he instructed me at the hard times, the difficult evenings, and I did what he instructed. Obedience. 
David is making it clear. First, God taught me how to see things. And second, God taught me how to do things. See it and then do things. The Lord taught me how to change things. God taught me what was unsound and how to make it sound. He showed me how to take what was shaky and how to make it stable. He showed me how to take what was unproductive and how to make it exceedingly fruitful. My role was simply obedience. We may not get what we want in certain areas of our life, but if we are wise, we would understand we always want what God gives us. King David goes on to say in verse 8, I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Woo! Get ready. Four and five, preference and confidence. I have set the Lord always in front of me. Before my face. He is my preference. I have preferred him. I have set the Lord. In other words, God permits me to put out my hand, as it were, and station him where I want him, that I may always have him in my sight. And be able to look at him to be calm to be blessed, to be strengthened. But we cannot do that if the world is our preference. If you let the world and wealth and business and anxieties and ambitions and cares and sorrows and duties and family responsibilities shake and hustle him out of your mind and heart, he won't be the first thing you see. He won't be the first thing you see because the first thing you will always see is what you prefer to see. See, there are people that prefer to see negative. It's the first thing they see. Negative Nellies. Not the overwhelming blessings in front of them, but the negativity they prefer to see. Because what one prefers always comes from something that they have allowed to resound with them. Oh, follow me. They have allowed it to resound with them. They have permitted resonance. They have permitted negative vibrations. They vibe with it. Listen, if you vibing with negativity, <laughs> I ain't vibing with you. My preference, if, you, if your preference is negativity, my preference is that you are out of my circle. I don't want to vibe with nothing else but God and his goodness. People have to understand, especially people that love to be optimistic. I was going to say idealist, but you know, that too. I am. I don't have room for negativity. I fight negativity. Don't come think you're going to befriend me. I fight you. So God is blazing there in front of us. But unless we set ourselves to it, we never see him. You have to look by a conscious effort over and away from the things that are seen and temporal if you want to see the things that are unseen and eternal. God is ever right there. The God that is always there. But we may be the ones far away from him, although he be not far away from every single one of us. And if we are to have him blazing, clear and unobscured, above and beyond all the midst and shadows of the earth, we will need continual effort in order to keep him in our sight. I prefer you. Not this yapping, that yapping, this tugging on me, this irking me, this trying to get under my skin, this one trying to derail me. 
Uh-uh. I prefer you. Setting the Lord before us. And I, and I will tell you this. Each and every one of you that are here tonight, you are here because you preferred him. You preferred him over something, dot, dot, dot. I don't know what, but I'm glad you did. And most importantly, you will be glad that you did. You see, we become aware of God's presence when we realize he is present. We must understand when he comes, he always comes with his hands full, family. I have set the Lord always before me, says David. And then he goes on to say, because he is at my right hand, in other words, not only in front of me, but God is at my side. And family, God is at your side, by your side, and on your side, and never believe anything different. <laughs> on your side for what? Why do we summon someone to come and stand beside us? So that from God's presence, there may come help, there may come courage, and there may, there may come confidence. And so God comes to the right hand of the man or woman who honestly endeavors, whosoever, through all confusions and bustles of life to realize his sweet and calming presence. Family, where God comes, he comes to help, not to be a spectator, never, but an ally in the warfare. And whoever sets the Lord before him or her will have the Lord at their right hand. You do right now. You set him before you, he's at your right hand. And there is a steadfastness which God and God alone brings. Because he is at my right hand, I shall, shall what? Escape sorrows? No, ma'am. Have my life filled with serenity? No, sir. But with God, I shall not be moved. Confidence. As opposed to a reed shaken in the wind. You see, Simon was a reed shaken in the wind before Jesus changed his name to Peter, a rock. <laughs> a reed shaken in the wind is humanity. It's a metaphor for humanity. It's human nature. But God says in Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 18 and 19a, and, for, and I, for my part, family, the only part that counts. And I, for my part, I have made you today a fortified city, an iron pillar family, and a bronze wall. Yes, they will fight against you, but they shall not prevail. That right there, that's the weakness of man stiffened into uprightness and rooted in steadfastness by the touch of the hand of a very present God, the God who is always there. We're talking about confidence, not in oneself, but with God. You see, confidence in oneself is a reed shaken in the wind. Don't do it. But confidence in God is an iron pillar and walls of bronze. Family, tonight I'm here to tell you, with God, you shall not be moved. There is nothing else that will steal someone's soul but God. There is nothing else that will anchor a person's spirit but God. God will make you able to stand right on the spot. 
While everything else is shaking, you're going to be standing. To stand with steadfast convictions. To stand with steadfast purposes. To stand with steadfast actions. To be unmoved. Unmoved by any kind of side show. But instead, God will make you able to move continuously in one direction. Having overcome all to stand. Family, may you have gratefulness, praise, obedience, preference, and confidence. But tonight I have been sent by God to tell you that God has made your past a preparation for your destination. God has used all of your evenings that went into darkness to prepare you for what he is about to pour out for you, in you, and through you. What the devil meant to bring you down, God has used instead to bring you up to the level of what he will lift up in your life. God has used your yesterdays of 2022 to make you rise to the levels of 2023. And now you will be able to handle a healthy relationship. Now you will be able to handle the promotion. Now you'll be able to handle those choppy waters. Now you'll be able to handle those open doors. <laughs> Family, with God <laughs> and only God, anything that was destructive in your life, has constructed you to construct. Anything that was cleared away from your life has made a way for you to see clearly. Anything that was displaced in your life has helped you find a home that cannot be lost. Anything that was uprooted has rooted you in deeper places. Oh, you got to know anything that shook you, settled you. Anything that wrecked you, rebuilt you. Anything that stole from you, seized a blessing for you. Anything that slandered you, ended up complimenting you. Thank you very much. Anything that broke you only made you heal stronger. Anything that disappointed you only ended up appointing a breakthrough for you. You hear that? You hear that? Whatever disappointed you this year, it has appointed a breakthrough for you. I don't know if it's my sangre caliente but I, I feel like praising. You know what I mean? I feel like praising. Yes, I lost some things. Woo! But thank you, Jesus, that I didn't lose you. <laughs> some of your yesterdays may have been low, uh-huh, they may have been low, but God has used it to prepare you for the blessing that's coming from on high. God goes before you. God is beside you. No one can make you up or take you up better than God. No one can give you a before or after like God. I don't care who they, they, they do make up for. J-Lo, Beyonce, nobody can give a better before and after better than God. Woo! <laughs> Family, some of you have been bringing things with you from many years past into the new year. Still lugging it with you. Still allowing the devil to weigh you down. And unbeknownst to you, all this time, 
God gave you these clippers. These nice big Holy Ghost clippers. I'm not going to be chained to that anymore. My hope is not in that. I'm not going to be in bondage to that anymore. You can't hold me like that. You can't. My God has big hands. And I fit perfectly in them. You fit perfectly in them. Some of you got to use the clippers and say, devil, be gone. I'm free. And because God was in your before, people are going to see him in your after. You understand that? Your night seasons where you're set up for your sunrise. Oh, the devil thought that set up was going to tear you down. But that was so that the sun can rise upon you. Know your inheritance and stand in your inheritance. Lastly, but not least, I'm gonna say, I wanna say this blessing over you, I'm gonna say this verse over you. But I know my God. And some of you right now have been counseled have been given revelation. What are you going to do with that? Again, that, that revelation is for your revolution. I'm tired of seeing the devil lie over and over and over again. And people that I love believe it. And you're my church family. I may not know you all personally, but God has gifted you to us spiritually. So I feel some of your weight even though I don't even know you. Pastor John and I pray for you. And there's some people in here that, boy, are their revolutions about to happen. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. It'll be epic. And that's what we're here for. To set that fire aflame. No more. No more. Because you have a God that is always there. Always there. Isaiah 60, verse 1 and 2. Arise. Shine. Shine, family. For your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you for behold the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people we're seeing it but the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen his glory family, it will be seen upon you. Amen. In 
in Jesus' mighty name. Stand up and give a thanks to God. Bless Him. Bless Him. Bless Him. Bless our good God. We will be children that are thankful to our Father. Children that are grateful to our Father. Every night He was there. He was there, baby girl. He was there, baby boy. He was there. It didn't feel like it. He was there. Count every night, every day, and thank Him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Some of you may even have to ask God for forgiveness for seeing the pain over the portion he gave you. See the portion, family. See the portions. There's portions in the pain. I can tell you that. There's portions in the pain. I can tell you that. Even when I can't see you, you're working. Even when I can't feel you, you're working. You never stop. You never stop moving. You never stop. Oh, even when I can't see you, even when I can't feel you, you're working, you're working, he's working. He's working, oh, he's working. He's working. Shake it off. Be big, cause you're big. He's working. He's working. Woo! He's working. He's working. He's working. He's working. Yeah. He's working. He's working. He's working. Come on. He's working. He's working. He's working. He's working. 